Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Z-Mam Show. We're here for our weekly Fear the Walking Dead podcast. We're looking at season four, episode number six, called Just In Case. On a side note, I hope you guys had a great weekend, and here we go as we jump in on the details. So, we have John, Dory, and Morgan working to find out a few more answers about the whereabouts of the Vulture crew, but not exactly for the reasons that we would probably like. John catches one of the uh, V crew, I'm going to call them, off guard as he tries to interrogate him the right way, giving him a chance to not draw his weapon and just answer a couple questions and be on his merry. However, the vulture guy, which I found out was Edgar, uh, actually tries for his gun, and John totally blows his pinky off uh, with his gun. I mean, I can't, you can't say John didn't warn him, but what an idiot. Um... They find a map, and Morgan convinces John to let the guy go. As John has his pistol drawn on the guy, he's just he's ready to kill him. Um, Morgan ends up warning the vulture that um, there are people looking for them uh, and looking to kill them, and that they shouldn't meet at their next rendezvous location. Uh, so we're going to hit back on that a little bit later on. So meanwhile, Althea is driving Strand, Luciana, and Alicia to the location of uh, the vultures, or at least this next map location. Alicia wants Althea's big guns on the SWAT truck rig, trying to, you know, hire her services, if you will. But Althea only wants to keep to the original deal, a ride for their story. So, okay, that's fine. You know, we get Althea. She's a, a reporter, a true at heart. So we keep on with that. So we head back now to the past, in, uh, to the Diamond Stadium colony. Uh, peeps are on edge as the vultures continue to hang out in front. Uh, we find out that uh, some of the storyline that Madison pulled Strand out of the water, I guess after that dam explosion, and she saved him from drowning. And then she nursed him back to health in some kind of cave and whatnot. So, you know, I mean, uh, Strand has got to be feeling bad and like a total dick for keeping a side stash for a quick getaway in that vehicle he had. Um, after the Clark family has done so much for him, even saving his life probably multiple times. I mean, he is a selfish man. I and mean, again, we'll get back to on him in a little bit. So it's really hard right now, on a side note, to trust Naomi. Uh, so we find her sneaking off in a vehicle uh, to her supposed last group location where there still might be some supplies, seeds, fertilizer, etc. She says the road is very dangerous and doesn't want anyone to get hurt. But of course, our peeps want to join in on the quest. So Madison and, and Strand end up joining Naomi. Maybe, if anything, just to keep an eye on her. Uh, so it's late that night as they're driving as they decide to stop off at some motel for shelter. Uh, they end up checking a lot of the rooms, the windows are broken, so they end up heading over to the office where they kill a few walkers, which seems they had fought over some food themselves and ended up killing each other. And then we find out that uh, Naomi was staying at an abandoned FEMA shelter. She shares that little small piece of information. Uh, she confesses that she actually wasn't leaving for the seeds and so forth, but she was going to leave the colony, the diamond colony altogether. Uh, Strand is not happy about this one at all. Uh, she, uh, Naomi also mentioned that she was going to leave a map so that they could find the area if they wanted to go there. So, you know, trust her if you will. It's really hard to, like I said. Um, I really don't understand Naomi and her motives at the moment, but we'll get a little bit more on that uh, pretty soon. Uh, Strand calls her out as a coward and takes the keys so she can't get away. But oops, they don't know that she is an expert car hot wiring expert. And Madison awakens the next morning to find Naomi gone. And so they start their pursuit. Meanwhile, Naomi makes it to the abandoned FEMA building where her and her daughter were staying. Uh, there uh, are a ton of undead inside of these front locked doors that are totally chained up. So she must find another side entrance in because, again, she stayed here for a while. She makes it to the building. She comes across... Um, some children art and some beds and so forth and she's kind of getting choked up a bit and then she finally makes her way to an awesome cache full of a few handguns some survival notes like how to plant certain things and create sutures and all that stuff and she also pulls out a set of keys with some initials written on it uh it's called, it said j-i-c which i think we're tying back to the just in case uh, of the name of the episode so she comes across another of uh, the mess hall where uh, there's a bunch of dead bodies bullets or some guns strung around and just to the side there's a bunch of those walkers that were at the front entrance and she peers over and she sees a door uh, with some kid drawn pictures on it and she quickly loses you know kind of like uh 
her knees and she just falls straight to the ground and starts weeping and causing all the walkers at the front doors to converge on her position. Holy crap. So while trying to escape, she has several chances to pull the trigger of her gun and start killing off some of these zombies, but she hesitates every time. It's clear she knew these people. She yells out to them that she's sorry as she makes her way up onto the scaffolding just barely. And, you know, so clearly something terrible went down here. Uh, that info is coming up here in just a moment. Strand and Madison amazingly find Naomi and work to save her, although she doesn't want to be saved. Almost like she ends up throwing keys to Madison, telling her, take the truck, it has everything you need. But Strand decides to rig up a tightrope assembly as Naomi plays cliffhanger, dangling above a mound of walkers. And I'm telling you, man, that would have been one way, one way to go. But uh, the three make it out of that room. Okay, they shut the doors, lock them up. And Naomi decides to share the rest of her story with Madison and Strand. So we find out Naomi's daughter's name was Rose. Uh, she had already lost her husband uh, before even making it to the FEMA location. There was a woman named Ellen who taught classes for JIC just in case, uh, kind of training, amongst other things. Um, and then at one point... Uh, Rose fell badly ill and she needed antibiotics, so Naomi left and she hid her um, and told her to lock the door in case anything bad happened. Uh, so Naomi took three days and finally found the antibiotics that she needed, but when she got back, the whole camp was dead, including her daughter. Rose must have turned, I think she said, like the first night, and I guess she would have killed several, as then they all began turning and took over the FEMA camp. Not much different than we saw in season three when... Um, with uh, Rick and the others when the one uh, young boy fell ill and then he woke up in the middle of the night and started very much munching on everybody and then it, the whole place just went to hell on a handbasket. So, you know, this was a sucky deal for sure, but it's clearly a case of shit happens and oh boy, did it. Uh, Naomi shows them a truck that was prepped just in case they ever had to leave containing tons of seeds, fertilizer, and so forth. Uh, Strand also confessed to Madison at one point, by the way, in this show, that he had a contingency plan and a vehicle, and that, you know, people don't change, just kind of showing his true nature. Um, Madison is definitely a stronger person than Strand and many others, as she can, you know, tells him, like, what do you want me to say? Like, I should have left you to drown? You know, she wouldn't have done that. She, she wanted to save him, and she would do it again, even knowing the information she has. She has a sense of duty, a clear leader. And however, Strand, you know, he did pull through by the end of the episode. He helped to save Naomi, and he did help get the supplies back. I mean, he wants to do good. His his treachery and snakeness or whatever was always in the background, but it, he seems to always try to come forward and do the right thing. So that's kind of cool to see out of him in this episode. So uh, the truck rolls in uh, back to the Diamond Colony, and, you know, everybody's out there kind of gloating in front of Mel and his vultures. Um, as, uh, excuse me, as Madison pulls in, Mel calls out, uh, that, you know, you, you should be careful about the unforeseen and the future and uh, how it can be very dangerous. And so Mel calls out to the others to pack it up, that they can't wait them out. Uh, so Madison pulls Alicia aside once they get inside the colony, and she's kind of peering out into the, uh, parking lot, noticing that all the vultures are gone, but you can tell she's, she's not convinced. She tells Alicia to get some food rations, a few rifles, and get them in the Land Rover and park it out back, just in case. And damn right they should. There is no way in hell that I would believe that those vulture a-holes would just up and go, like, oh, clean and pretty. Uh, I guess, sorry, better luck next time, guys. We'll just get the next colony. You know that they're going to try and do something vicious now. So we flash forward now to after the fall, well, we, well, at least we believe the fall of the Diamond Colony. Alicia, Strand, Luciana, and Althea make it to the Vulture Rendezvous Point and prepare to ambush them. Moments later, a van pulls up, the one we recognize from the beginning with Edgar, the guy who got his pinky blown off by John. And then uh, Morgan and John exit the vehicle, and Alicia and her crew immediately roll up guns pointed on the two. On their knees and guns drawn on them, Morgan confesses that the vultures won't be coming, that they warned them to stay away. Alicia is none too pleased to hear this. And just on a side note on Althea, WTF? John asks her for a little help to confirm, you know, they're not vultures, that, you know, just to help them out and that they're trying to do the right thing. And she just kind of like, looks, kind of gives them a weird look like, huh, you know, it happens. She doesn't say a word and she just stays behind the camera filming the whole thing. I mean, talk about acting like a total bee. I'm just, I mean, she is a reporter after all, so it's not surprising. I guess she did what any reporter probably would do. 
And just when you think it couldn't get any worse, Mel and his crew roll up on Alicia and the others. They come out of their 8 to 10 RVs, guns fully drawn and ready for battle. Something we're not used to seeing from the Vulture crew. There's a tense moment where Mel tells Alicia that he's sorry about her brother, uh, Nick. Uh, I guess, you know, for being killed. And Alicia coldly responds, she's not sorry about his. Whoa, girl! That is definitely one way to start a gunfight. A female voice then quickly comes in over the radio asking where they are and a couple of things. My ears immediately perked up and my eyes widened as I just immediately recognized that voice. But could it be? And son of a gun, a Land Rover rolls right on up and Naomi exits. WTF, guys, what is going on here? I mean, was she seriously one of them as well? Is this why she kept telling Madison that the colony wasn't going to work and that it was going to get worse before it got any better? I mean, talk about betrayal again. I mean, I never fully trusted her, but damn, I cannot believe this. I mean, almost more than uh, the other young girl, you know, who portrayed and killed Nick. Uh, sorry, names eluded me at the moment, but you know what I'm talking about. So John immediately sees... Um, Naomi, Laura, you know, he calls her out and he runs to her. Alicia loses her shit and turns and uh, heaving her drawn, you know, M16 with the attached grenade launcher and screams no as she fires a round that totally hits John instead of the intended target, Naomi. John drops to the ground and the episode pretty much ends off just in that stance. So just from the scenes from next week's episode, a shootout is absolutely going down. Um... You know, I, I need to know more about this Naomi situation. I mean, was she a mole the entire time? Uh, did she leave the vultures to try and lead a different life, but then, you know, got caught up with those at the Diamond Stadium and felt she had to do good? Uh, when did she team up with them? Was it after the death of her daughter? I mean, there's so many questions here I just have and I want to know. Um, I'm going to throw this episode, guys, an 8 out of 10. We saw a lot of fun things in this episode. Uh, we got to find out some more major backstory on Naomi that I felt was very fulfilling. Uh, yet there's still more to know. Uh, as for my questions we just talked about, we see some character development around Strand and him coming clean about uh, to Madison about his getaway car. Uh, maybe uh, he actually did teach Madison, though, something after all with having that Land Rover. But then again, why does Naomi have that Land Rover? Oh, man, I mean, these questions are just hitting me right I'm crazy. Uh, I hope you did enjoy this uh, podcast and review of episode six. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe, or, uh, excuse me, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because it would definitely make my day. Uh, we only have two episodes left and it sounds like they're going to be explosive. So keep your guns holstered for now and we'll see how this craziness plays out next week. Have a great week, everyone. See ya.